there you are. There's my dog. There's my dog. Hello, everybody. What I want to do is give you another segment here. Um, and this has to do, and you saw the part of my dog. Come here, Lex. I want you to look. There's my dog, Lex. And the reason I'm going to, the reason I'm showing you my dog is I want to talk about the dogs of war a little bit. And we're going to talk about, if you know anything about dogs, AKC. You know, they talk about AKC registered. And so we're going to look at that, the letter A, letter K, and the letter C, dealing with what we left off with the Cold War. And we're talking about Truman and Stalin. And we're looking at the idea uh, that it was about strategic positioning. And so what I want to do with the letter A, we're going to talk about something called the airlift. This is Berlin. And the letter K, Korea. And the letter C, Cuba. And so this is going to have to be fast, and I'm not going to get to a lot of detail. But if you want more detail, you're going to have to come into my 022 room, I suppose. Um, now, here we go. The first one is Berlin Airlift, and the Berlin Airlift took place in 1948 to 49. And it was an incident that occurred uh, basically because in the Western zone, Western Europe, uh, West Germany, uh, Truman and the Allies, mainly Truman and the Americans, decided to institute a new currency. And so this is a reaction by Joseph Stalin. And this is all this is, is action, reaction, think of chessboard, move, counter move. And so the whole idea is once the Americans made this move on the currency, um, Stalin decided to make a bold move and he closed the border. And this borders to Berlin. Berlin is in the middle of East Germany. So Berlin is in a sea of communism, basically. And so what you get out of this uh, is in this Berlin airlift, the Americans then and the, and the Brits had a decision to make. How do you deal? What do you, how do you, what's your counter move? And one thought was to smash through this blockade. You know, there's a road, you have Berlin, let's say, and then here's West Germany, and you could go and take these roads, but that would mean confrontation. And so this is kind of a game of chicken in a way. Um, it's a high escalated game of chicken because most people believe looking at this in 1948-49, especially 48, this may be World War III. And where we left off with is the isotopes, the eyes, okay, is uh, the, what kept the Cold War cold is nuclear. You could fight by proxy. And this is where we'll get to Korea. Um, but the whole idea with the Berlin airlift is uh, Truman and the Allies then decided to have this round the clock, basically, airlift that went on. So they'd fly the planes over, drop supplies. Um, and this ended up being like 2,000 tons, tons of food. Uh, and also over 12,000 tons of fuel a day. These are the brave pilots got these massive C-47, huge cargo planes, and took great odds because the Soviets tinkered the idea of interfering but never really did anything specifically. In other words, showing we really don't want this kind of an engagement. Now, that's important when we end up with Cuba later on. These are all connecting in some way. But the Berlin airlift went until May of 1949 when finally... OK, all this kind of resolved uh, in some ways, although the airlift continued, but it was the commitment. It showed the absolute commitment to support free peoples wherever they were. And it reminded the West Berliners, because this is the free Berlin, that we're still here for you. This is an unbelievable uh, episode. And I just wish I had more time to tell you about it. And there's some really good books on it. OK, anyway, uh, and, a, and the other point, side point there is not everybody gets medals for charging hills. Sometimes they get medals and they're heroes because they just tend to deliver those things. Think in today's situation, people go out and they, they deliver stuff to others. And I think that's kind of an airlift in a way. Okay, so let's go to the K, Korea. Korea is 1950 to 53. And the Korean War is where Korea ends up being split. Okay, you have a North Korea that was communist and South Korea that becomes non-communist. Uh, the North Korean leader... Uh, is a man named Kim Il-sung, S-U-N-G, okay, and his uh, relative is who we're dealing with today in Korea, North Korea. Um, and so what you have is Kim Il-sung and North Koreans wanted to reunify Korea. They want to conquer it uh, and make it into one. And so with the support of the Soviet Union and the man in charge of the Soviet Union, same guy dealing with the Berlin Airlift, you got it, Uncle Joe, Joseph Stalin. And so Stalin Gave the thumbs up. And the reason, now you got to get into this. Why Joseph Stalin would do this? Because everybody goes, well, he's evil and stuff. And I'm not going to go against that idea. I think he had some big problems. I think we know enough about Stalin and his uh, uh, doings. Okay? Uh, his purges. He liked to purge, didn't he now? But the reality check is this. The Americans had a Secretary of State named Dean Acheson. This is who you need to look up. And Dean Acheson said, 
the Americans do not see the Korean Peninsula, uh, or Taiwan, by the way, if you want to look this up, this speech, as an area of interest for us. In other words, Joseph Stalin said, okay, this isn't somewhere you're interested in, so hey, I'll go ahead and push the button and tell Kim Il-sung, you go for it, we'll support you militarily and financially, and you unify in Korea will now be a communist region. By the way, the other thing that you got to understand in 1950, a very important event, is China communist revolution wrapped up with Mao. And so now you have a communist China, the Soviets, and you have this peninsula, the Korean peninsula, yes. And now with this thought, the U.S. have no interest in it, here comes the invasion by North Korea. As this occurred, the South Koreans are rolled back. They're not ready for this at all. They're a very poorly equipped and poorly trained military. And now the United States, through the U.N., decides to get involved. What I love about the U.N. stories, we kind of left off with that a little bit, didn't we? Is in the U.N. who's the big five members? Yes, the United States. And then who's the other two that we really worried about? China and Soviet Union. China and Soviet Union are, are, are not there. Okay, isn't this fun? So in other words, you know, who's running the show? Okay, the U.S., yeah. And so via Truman in the U.N., there's a decision by the U.N. Security Council is to, to defend South Korea. So the United States, along with about 20 other countries, end up going into South Korea and end up pushing eventually, and man's in charge, our gold friend Doug, Doug, Douglas MacArthur, uh, corn cob pipe and all shows up there. Uh, he's not one of our founding fathers, but he's, he's one of our gentlemen we, we deal with eventually. And MacArthur then goes in. Uh, there's an, there's a, it's the 8th U.S. Army, if you want to look this up. And series of, there's, a, there's a division of Marines in, embedded with them, and they end up pushing okay, the North Koreans back. They reel them all the way back to this thing called the 38th parallel, this established border, the original border. And then MacArthur decides, I'm going to finish him. I'm going to just roll right on up. MacArthur did meet with Truman and convinced Truman and them that the Chinese have no interest in getting involved. The key is, once again, by proxy. You don't want to widen this war. You don't want this to go nuclear. Okay, this is not a good situation. So by doing this, um, MacArthur begins to go up in his pincer maneuver up both coasts, and then eventually the Chinese did, about 200,000 Chinese come across the Yalu River, which is the river that divides between North Korea, and then rolled the Americans back. And then finally, at the end of it all, MacArthur, of course, is removed, but at the end of it all, everything is back to where it was. And in, in uh, June 27th, if I'm correct, in 1953, there's an armistice, not a treaty, an armistice. Remember, only a treaty can end a war. So technically, this is still going on. This demilitarized zone is put in place. What I love, if you ever study Korea, my favorite person, <laughs> and I'm being very facetious here, was Curtis LeMay. Bombs away LeMay. LeMay's line about Korea was very simple. We bombed and burned down every North Korean town. We even bombed and burned a bunch of South Korean towns. I think we even burned and bombed this, this, the capital city of South Korea. But it was worth it. I mean, this is ridiculous, isn't it? This is why Curtis LeMay would not be elected president, by the way, as he ran uh, for office later on. This, he's a fun guy to read about. Bombs away LeMay, the American Strategic Bombing Command. Um, anyway, there we go. And I got a good friend who I work with and a good mentor. He loves to talk about LeMay. And he's an old Air Force guy, and he knows. Okay, so here we go. The last one's Cuban. I know the time. I told him this is real fast and furious history. So here we go, it's Gallagherized um, with the time limit. Um, Cuba, let's fast forward from uh, 1953 to 1961 to 62. By the way, Korea, last thing's more important is Stalin died in 53. So when people talk about why this all of a sudden kind of dissipated in 1953, American history, you got to really be careful and study Soviet military history too. They're involved. And so the whole idea is ever since the end of the Cold War, greater access, thank God for historians that do this diligent work. We know now. We know better now. I will tell you what to do. Uh, the Korean War, the American experience on PBS, best series I've ever seen. Uh, and and, it, and it's, uh, um, it's uh, uh, the gentleman who tells you the story, the narrator, is John Cho, okay? All right, anyway, here we go. So uh, Cuba, 1961-62, Stalin's dead. Um, and now the two guys in are the two Ks, Kennedy for the Americans and Khrushchev for the Soviets. Um, Cuba really starts out with Kennedy inheriting a situation in Cuba called the Bay of Pigs, is what it's going to be known as. Uh, the idea of what do you do with Cuba? We want to get rid of Fidel Castro. Kennedy then, via the CIA and a group of other agencies, it's very interagency oriented. And this is part of the confusion. And this is part of why it's ham handed and not handled very well. I had the, the, uh, the benefit of listening to a guy named John Gettinger. 
He was actually the former uh, Marine colonel uh, who was uh, in, uh, hired by the CIA to, to deal with this. Um, and then later on, you'll see him in Guatemala with Eisenhower. You saw him in Guatemala and Eisenhower, and then later on, Tampa Bay of Pigs, by the way, um, which he was interesting and entertaining. So the whole idea in 1961 is the Americans uh, launched this Bay of Pigs to remove Castro. It's a fiasco. The best line I've ever heard comes right out of the period of time by one of Kennedy's advisors who says, it made us look like fools to our friends, rascals to our enemies, and incompetence to the rest. It didn't go very well. Um, it didn't remove Castro. We were waiting for an internal rebellion to rise up. That never happened. Um, we were, uh, the, the boat that had all the, all the uh, radar equipment, communications equipment, everything else, ammo gets blown up. You put everything in one boat. This is a dumb idea. Um, it, it just went poorly, and it just signaled to Castro and to the Soviets that maybe Kennedy's a young, which he was president, doesn't know what he's doing. Um, and it didn't help the Kennedy administration. I know I'm past 10, but hang on. I want to get to the missile crisis. Now, why the missile crisis? Because the wonderful word for the missile crisis is quarantine. Here we are today. Now, I'm not going to give you all about it. I'm going to give you another segment on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Because I think you need to hear about this more on an independent basis. The key word of the Cuban Missile Crisis is quarantine. Why? Because Kennedy and the military decided to put a naval blockade. They, but they couldn't use the word blockade. So they used the word, we're going to quarantine. <laughs> Just like they were quarantining, aren't we? And much like the Cuban Missile Crisis, we hope this dissipates and goes away very soon, don't we now? Hmm, coronavirus begins with a C. Maybe there's a relationship here. If we all quarantine, maybe this is the answer. So when you think about it, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I'll get back to it, is a very interesting, interesting dynamic. And this is in October of 1962. And I'm going to tell you a really good quick story about it next time. So tune in. I'm giving you a cliffhanger on the Cuban Missile Crisis and Castro because there's some good fun stories. But don't forget, AKC. And this is really the ideas of the Cold War being fought via proxy, okay? And the Cold War, in a, in a sense, being this, this, this debate between strategic positioning between the two great powers. But neither one wanting to go nuclear, which is where we leave off with the Cuban Missile Crisis. You guys have a good day. Be safe. I'll see you in class here in just about an hour. Bye-bye.